Hello, my name is Ben and welcome once again to our lectures on introduction to political concepts and today we are going to talk about knots and links. And uh, the objective of our lecture today will be to demonstrate the existence of knots other than the unknot and also to demonstrate the existence of links of two components other than the unlink of two components. We will define those terminologies of course, so don't worry about them. And so by the end of this lecture today, you should be able to define knots and links. You should also be able to recognize prime knots, which again we'll define up, with, up to four crossings. But of course, uh, you, can, you, can, you can do more, a little bit more. And also simple links uh, from their projections on the plane. Uh, you should also be able to apply the circle leading master moves to simplify knot and link diagrams. You should also be able to calculate linking numbers for oriented links and also apply what you call tricolorability to knots. Okay, so let, to start off our discussion, let's look at what knots are. So uh, one way of thinking about knots is just as a loop of string or a piece of string with the loose ends tied together. So maybe the loop of string could be wiggled a little bit uh, to make some simple kind of under and over crossings. And so uh, one question that we could ask is, is it possible that the, all th these sort of knottings can be unknotted? And so maybe uh, in order to uh, define knots mathematically, we can think of the space where these knots live and knots live in a three dimensional space. So we can think of knots as a subset of three space but which is homeomorphic to the unit circle. So if you take finitely uh, disjoint uh, knots and then put them together, then what you end up with is a link. And so we will have the definitions. So you can see that a knot is a subspace, is a, or a subset of the three space homeomorphic to the unit circle. And so we can define a link as a finite or a union of finitely many Joined knots. And so again, when we talk about this joint, all we mean is that uh, the pieces have no common point, uh, but we do not, we, we do not uh, mean that they are delinked. They don't just have the components of the link do not just have elements. And so we can. Uh, so what we call the components of the link are nothing but the individual nodes that form up the link. So we see that two links are equivalent that is if <coughs> they are isotopic. So in other words, we mean that uh, you can obtain one link from the other without necessarily cutting and gluing, uh, without necessarily cutting and gluing. And so we will see that any knot that is equivalent The unit circle in that case unit circle is this set such that x squared plus y squared is equal to one is said to be unknotted or is called an unknot and also any any um link 
that is equivalent to this set that is equivalent to so we'll talk of x y and i so that x squared plus y squared is equal to one and uh, we have our i ranges from one to n is called a link with n components so for example uh, a simple example of a knot would be this the so-called unknot And uh, the usual notation for the R0 is U1. So an R0 is just the same as a link but with one component. Another example. Is this one here. So this is the left hand trefoil knot. Third example. And this is called the figure eight knot. And so on. So th these are these are just but some few examples of uh, what we call prime knots. So in the table of prime knots, knots are arranged according to uh, the number of uh, crossings. So this has three crossings, this has four crossings, and of course this has zero, this has no crossing. And so on that table you'll find these knots arranged the R knot denoted by zero to denote zero crossings, uh, the left-handed trifle knot by three one, and of course the uh, the figure eight knot by four one. And then again, that table does not list also the mirror images or the or the reflections of these knots. So the reflection of a knot is obtained by simply drawing. Uh, these various uh, drawing these various node diagrams, but interchanging the way the crossings appear. So where there's an undercrossing, you'll put an overcrossing, and where there's an overcrossing, you'll put an undercrossing. So now, an exercise which I would like to give to you is the following. So I want you to try and uh, use a string. So you are going to use that string, uh, maybe to model. these links and now the second thing I'll want you to do I'll want you to draw the reflections sorry so these are links or knots let's just call them knots so draw a reflection of the knots above and then the third thing for part two, that is the trefoil knot, and part three, that is a figure eight knot, to check for equivalence. In other words, just wiggle. So if, if, if you take the trefoil knot, for example, so then the notation for um, the notation for the mirror for the reflection will be <coughs> the same same notation but with a bar on top so I want you to check for me 
whether these two are equivalent. Okay, so examples of links. First example is what to call the half link. We also have uh, what is called the whitehead link and uh, another link which is also interesting is the Borromean link but now for the Borromean link so there is an over crossing so here we need an under crossing here we need an over crossing so we need an under crossing So here we need uh, like that, and then finally have like that. So that's how the Borromean lo link looks like. And one thing about the Borromean link is that if you remove <coughs> any one component from this link, then the other component become delinked. Okay, so as an exercise, I wanted to answer the following question that a link of three components is formed by adding one component of the half link as shown. So I wanted to explain whether this link is equivalent to the Borromean link. And so uh, next, I want us to look at the reading master moves. So these are the moves which will help us with the manipulation of link or knot diagrams to reduce them to simple or to simpler knot diagrams or to equivalent knot diagrams. So there are three moves. Or there are three manipulations named after the mathematician uh, Rede Master. And so the first uh, manipulation is the following. So suppose in a node diagram you, you have like a, a, on a single component you have a loop which looks like this then it's possible to resolve this crossing so that you simply have you simply completely do away with the road uh, do away with the crossing so this is the first day master move now the second day master move uh, goes as follows so suppose you have two successive over crossing so in a neighborhood of two successive in, so if in a small neighborhood you have two successive over crossings or under crossings then this can also be resolved so as to have the following so and so this is the second ready master move which is normally noted by r2 and then for the third move so suppose you have the following So if you have the following case with this over crossing, this crossing both strands over or under, then it is possible to manipulate this so that if this was to the left, for example, then it goes to the right. And so this is third really master move. So we see that two links are equivalent. That is if one can be obtained from the other. Using a finite sequence of read the master moves
and plain iced rice cookies. So as an example, uh, if we have the following. So you can apply a sequence of reader master moves to reduce this into a simpler node diagram. So the first reader master move we are going to apply here is um, the third reader master move. So there are these two successive uh, undercrossings here which you want to bring down. So we'll have something like this. So the undercrossings will be somewhere below here. And then in the next step we are going to apply the second read the master move to the to these two successive undercro undercrossings. So this is R3. So I'll put the second read the most move here. And so this will give us something which looks like this. Then again we'll apply another second reader master move and so this will bring give us this kind of a diagram and then finally if we apply the first reader master move we are going to get something which looks like this to resolve this part and so we've made use of a series of reader master move to show that this is equivalent to the unknot of and link two components. So the next thing we want to define or we want to orient our links so we say that a link is oriented that is if a direction or if direction is assigned to its components. So such a sign assignment will involve putting arrows and an arrow or arrows on the individual components. So for example uh, we can orient the half link in this manner. We can also uh, orient our whitehead link in the following fashion. And also there is this other note that we've not so link that we've not so far met, which is called uh, the King Solomon knot. So this is the under, this should be over, and then this should be under, and then this should be over. And so we can orient it in this fashion. And so what you need to note is that uh, uh, a knot can only be oriented in two different ways. But uh, but if you have a link with more than two components, then you have more than two ways of giving orientations. So now we also need one more uh, one more um, ingredient in order to make, to meaningfully make use of. Um, make use of uh, the orientations and links and again I also need to tell you that uh, the links that we're going to talk about are links with only two components so what we need is an assignment of uh, 
of, 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 of orientation or handedness to our, to our crossing. So we'll say that we'll define a right handed crossing. As, I could, as follows so now <clears throat> if you are standing on the overcrossing stand then uh, you'll say that a crossing is right handed if you can observe the undercrossing stand to be moving from right to left so that gives you a right handed crossing and now for a left handed crossing Again, you'll stand on the overcrossing stand, overcrossing strand, and then if you observe the undercrossing strand to be moving from left to right, then you'll call that a left-handed crossing. And so, we want to make use of this in order to calculate what we call the linking numbers. So what we're going to do is So we are going to assign the integer plus one to a right handed crossing and the integer minus one to a left handed crossing. And then we say that the linking number of any crossing is the sum of plus ones and minus ones divided by two. And so for example, in a previous diagram of the Hoffling, in a, this crossing here, again, if you observe, If you, if you keenly observe, you realize that this is a right-handed crossing. So look at the way the overcrossing strand is, is sloping. And then you find that that's, that crossing is right-handed. Now again, if you carry on, so, so again, face this strand, then you can, as you can see, this strand is sloping from right to left, and so this again another right-handed crossing. So that the linking number will be plus one plus one divided by two, which is one. Now I'll want you to try the same for the whited link and the half link. So the whited link and the King Solomon knot to show to see that the crossing numbers are respectively sorry the linking numbers are respectively zero and minus one. So now, an exercise that I want you to try and perform is, I want you to show that the linking number of a link of two components is invariant. Under the read master moves. So it's not something that speed is not hard to show. <coughs> so 
so if two equivalent and unoriented links of two components are oriented in any way then the absolute value of their linking numbers are equal. So this is a powerful statement but only useful in the counterpositive sense. And so that is how we are going to be able to indeed show that, demonstrate that there are other links of two components other than the unlink of two components. So the contrapositive statement will be the following, that if two non-oriented links of two components are oriented in any way <coughs> and the absolute value of the two links are not equal then the links are not equivalent. And so, indeed, this is a statement that will help us, it will demonstrate that there are, more, there are other links also of two components other than the unlink, because you know that the unlink of two components has a link in number zero, but of course we found that the half link has has, has um, a linking number of positive one and uh, the King Solomon knot has a linking number of minus two so the absolute value is positive two and so these are other examples of links which are different from the unlink of two components. So here is the exercise. So for each of the following pairs of links, I want to determine if the absolute value of the linking numbers can be used to determine whether the links are equivalent. They are equivalent. So if so, we'll explain why. And if not, we'll also explain why. So we have the half link and the whited link, the half link and the King Solomon knot, the whited link and the King Solomon knot, and finally the whited link and the unknot knot of two components. And so now we can also we can now try to also show that there are some knots that cannot be unknotted. And so this will be we'll do via tricolorability. <coughs> so we'll say that a knot diagram or a knot a knot diagram is tricolorable, and that is if given the diagram itself and given a set of three colors then it is possible to color this diagram in such a way that at least two colors are used and also whenever at any crossing two colors are used then the third must also appear at that crossing so we we'll say that a knot is tricolorable If given its diagram in the plane and given a set of three colors, then 
then each arc can be colored or can be assigned one of the three colors in such a way that number one at least two colors are used and then number two whenever two colors appear at a crossing then so does the third <coughs> so for example we know that uh, or we can say that this is an knot is not uh, colorable because it's, it only has one component and uh, and uh, we can only it only it only comprises of one arc and it's only one color that can be used then um, number two let's look at the trefoil knot So the trefoil knot is tricolorable, assuming that we color this a green. And maybe color this a blue. Then we can color this last a black. And so we'll find that the Therefore, not is tricolorable. Then let us look at the unknot. So that's number three. So if you have the unknot of two components, then again this is tricolorable because we can color one component, say red, and color the next component blue. Sorry. Oh, baby, let's just color it black. And so, this is tricolorable. This is also tricolorable. And so, an equivalent representation of this we have already seen. So for example, we can color this arc red. So now that's the end of that arc. So then we can color this arc here black. And see so if this is colored black, then this cannot be black, so this we can color blue. And then if you want to use two colors only, then you can see that we can also color this blue. So we have used exactly three colors in such a way that um, at any, whenever any two colors appear at a crossing, the third also appears. And so again as an exercise, I'll want you to once again show that uh, tricolorability is preserved under Ready Master Moves. And so if again we are convinced that this is the case then we'll have the following theorem that if two links of two components are equivalent or if two, if two links are equivalent and one is tricolorable then the other is also tricolorable.
and so um again this statement will be useful in a contrapositive sense in the sense that uh, it can only help us to distinguish between two links that are uh, to distinct to tell that two links are different so we'll say that uh, if a first link is tricolorable and the second link is not tricolorable then the two links are not equivalent so if you find that uh, two links are either both not tricolorable or both tricolorable then you cannot conclude on equivalence and so this will bring us to a conclusion that there exist knots which are not equivalent to the unknot. In other words, there are some knots which cannot be unknotted. And so that brings us to the end of our discussion today. Thank you very much for watching and I urge you to keep safe, observe all government directives and we'll beat this COVID pandemic. Thank you.